Okay, this week's video is part two of a series on TIG welding machines that I'm doing. In part one, I talked about sc mainly scratch start and lift arc DC TIG welders. This is part two. I'm talking about AC DC TIG welders today. So you can weld aluminum with these as well as steel. And all of them have little features and little nuances and little drawbacks and pros and cons. So I'm talking about four, four, <laughs> talking about four different TIG welders today. After this, I've got several more to talk about for a part three. But today I'm going to be talking about the Lincoln TIG 175, which is a transformer TIG welder. Very simple. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued, but you can still get them. Uh, also, the Miller Diversion 180, Everlast 210 EXT, and the Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200. All right, let's, let's get into it. Up first is Lincoln TIG 175. Again, it's a transformer machine, discontinued, but you can still get them. You can still order them new at certain places. Just do a quick Google search, you'll find them. Very simple machine, basically just polarity selection, TIG or stick selection, and amperage control. Not much more than that. I've got helium wide in here for this particular job, and I'm just using just a little bit of addition of helium, and man, does it make a difference. Speeds up travel speed, cleans up the puddle, lets you weld a lot thicker aluminum than you would be able to without it. It's a very inexpensive way to boost the performance of any AC-DC welder for welding a little bit thicker aluminum. I took on this job a while back, welding about, I don't know, 20 of these parts, one inch thick aluminum bar stock welded to one inch thick aluminum round and with that helium it knocked them out with no problem never even kicked the uh, overheat until the very last part welding them back to back on DC it's got a nice smooth arc you don't really notice or at least I don't notice a lot of difference from machine to machine on a DC arc AC is where you really notice the differences that's just showing here doing some socket welds freehand the first pass walking the cup on the second pass. DC arc is just fine. You can hear it's got a little hum to it that you probably wouldn't hear with an inverter. And one good thing about it is a really good stick welder too. And because it welds on AC on stick, you, you've got a good selection of rods. Here I'm using a 7014 rod and I prefer to use alternating current on 7014s as well as 7024 rods kind of eliminates the arc blow. I'm going to take a minute here to recommend this book again. You can get it at the James F. Lincoln Foundation. That's jflf.org. And for the cost, it's one of the best books you can find. All right, let's talk about some of the pros and cons on the Lincoln TIG 175. The pros are it's very simple machine. It's very durable. It's affordable at around $2,000. It's a good stick welder. It has auto AC balance, which basically means it gives you more cleaning action when you start at low amperage. You get things cleaned up, then you can ramp up the amperage a little bit, and you need less cleaning usually at high amperage, so that's automatically done for you. Uh, some of the cons are, number one, it's discontinued. Again, you can still get them. The weight, it's pretty heavy. You can't throw this in the back of a truck by yourself. It draws more power than inverters do and maxes out at 175 amps. And the post flow is fixed at 15 seconds, which really kind of wastes a lot of gas if you're welding a lot on things where you don't need that much post flow. Up next, Miller Diversion 180. This is a very simple machine also, but it's an inverter based machine. So it's portable, weighs much less. I know it weighs less than 50 pounds probably. It's very easily carried and thrown in the back of a truck or something like that. But you see the controls here. Basically it's pared down to you select either aluminum or steels and then amperage. And that's about it. Comes with this type of torch, which has got a on off button as well as a little thumb wheel there for amperage. Takes a little getting used to. Uh, in fact, it takes a lot of getting used to. I would plan on, if, if I was getting a diversion, I would just plan on getting the foot pedal. Make a big, big difference. I would only use this thing in, in emergencies when I was maybe welding overhead and having to drag the foot pedal across the shop a lot. This is the foot pedal. It's small. It, actually, I actually kind of like the foot pedal. It's pretty smooth and it's small. Uh, the drawback is it uses uh, sort of an Ethernet type cable with a plastic plug that goes into the machine. I'll show you that in a minute. This is Jonathan Lewis getting ready to do a shaft repair. We collaborated on a video a while back, and he did his portion of the shaft repair using his Miller Diversion 180. And here's a plug. Again, it's a plastic plug, which is good because it's very easily replaceable. Bad because if you were to, you know, accidentally pull the full length of the cable, you could snap that off pretty easily. 
So that's why Jonathan has put a little added clip here to hold the cable just using the existing screw. The torch is hardwired. I find that a drawback. You can change the torch out. I have known people to do it, but it requires taking the panel off the welder and everything. But the arc on DC is plenty smooth and the AC is fixed at 70% uh, cleaning or 70% negative, I should say, on the AC balance and the frequency is fixed at 120. That's why they're able to simplify the controls on the machine. Up next, Everlast 210 EXT. This is an AC-DC TIG machine with pretty much full features on it. Got pulse, AC balance, AC frequency, and more. And I've been using this machine a quite a while now and have it has earned its keep. I have made enough money to easily pay for it a couple of times by doing parts. In fact, one day I did 50 parts and made a thousand bucks using this machine and uh, it did really well using the pulse feature. Right now I've got it set to 250 hertz on AC. I'm trying to really pinpoint the arc and keep the, keep the bead on this little fillet weld small. Here I'm using just probably a little bit low amperage and here I cranked it up a little bit to make sure to get into that root. Okay, and also it's adjustable. Here I've adjusted it down to 50 hertz if you want something to weld more like the old transformer machines. Once again, the DC arc from machine to machine, to me, I don't notice a lot of difference. Like any of them do okay on DC, especially if you're not pulsing or anything. Here I'm at about 170 amps doing some parts that then got black oxide coated. Again, a good little money making job here that this machine did well on. This is the job where I did 50 parts and I, I wound up using the pulse feature here. 40% pulse on time, 50% pulse amps, pulse frequency at one and a half pulses a second. Put it on a turntable and just held the torch still and did this a lot of times. But it made, made for some good looking parts. This is the other end of that on the turntable at one and a half pulses a second. Same settings look like this. Here's, here's the 210 lighting up on the tip of a razor blade. See, it's got a nice low amp start, which is not the case with every affordable TIG welder. So I try to test out the low end as well as the high end of these machines. Some of the pro, uh, pros on this machine is it's a good price, about 1700 on Amazon. Uh, comes complete with the torch, foot pedal, five-year warranty. It's got a good arc on AC and DC, a good low amp start. Uh, some of the cons would just be the lesser known brand. It's not a legacy brand like a Miller or Lincoln. Foot pedal is just okay, not that great. And there's somewhat of a learning curve on the controls and the features to knowing what each button does and how to toggle through the settings on pulse and 2T, 4T, etc. But I will go over that at length in part three of this thing. Up next, Lincoln Square Wave 200 TIG welder. This is an inverter power source, very lightweight, around 40 pounds. And this one is pared down a little bit, made, made simple on the front face here, but it does have some adjustability on features. In addition to amperage, for instance, you've got AC balance, so you can adjust that as well as frequency, and it will go up to 150 on the frequency. And I'm going to weld a little bit, some thin aluminum here in just a second, using a sharpened electrode. And this is about uh, 30 thousandths, about 0.8 millimeter thick aluminum. And the machine is perfectly capable of doing that. It lights up low enough on aluminum to weld something in the 0.8 millimeter, 30 thousandths range. And here I'm going to show adjusting the frequency down all the way to 60, which is what you would encounter with a regular transformer machine using a, a less sharpened electrode doing a thicker plate around 80 thousandths thick, two millimeters thick, and just showing how that works pretty good. Here's 170 amps on DC using a number 12 Furic cup. That works out just fine. Also, here's, here's low amperage test here on a corner of a box cutter blade and lighting up on the corner with even with a nice sharp sharp electrode. Now it would do better with a 1 16th, a small electrode, but lighting up on the corner there it nipped it pretty good. It's got a pretty aggressive little snappy start on DC. I didn't find that to be quite the case on AC, but on DC it could be a little problem on some of the jobs that I've encountered over the years. 
You can work around it by using chill blocks, you know, putting a, a thick piece to light up on right, right next to where you're starting. It settles right down to a nice stable low amperage arc, just not ideal on the start. So here are some of the pros and cons. Price is around 1500 complete with the torch pedal, etc. Uh, basically everything but a bottle of argon. Inverters draw a lot less power, so this one will run off a 30 amp breaker with no problem. It's, it's, it's nice and light. It's got a SSC foot pedal, which is pretty good. A number 17 air-cooled torch and AC balance and AC frequency are adjustable. The cons are that, that the low amp DC arc starts are a little bit too aggressive for some applications. And one more thing, the pulse settings are fixed, meaning you can set the pulses per second, but not the background or pulse on time. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this week. As I mentioned in part one, there's going to be a giveaway. I'm going to give away an AC-DC TIG welder. It's brand new, still in the box. I will get it out and make sure everything works okay and do and use it for part of this review here. But um, stay tuned for part three to learn how to be eligible for that giveaway. See you next time.